That's me graduating Dictator College. And this is me taking over the world with smiles. And this is where I'd put a trophy. If I had one! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 cartoon characters that should be in prison. Your task is nearly completed! Don't let down Pharaoh now! For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable ne'er-do-wells that should be behind bars, or at least in some legal trouble, pronto. However, while we are including antagonists and villainous folks, we'll be excluding actual supervillains, since that would make things too easy. Did we miss any repeat offenders? Let us know in the comments below. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3pm and 8pm Eastern only at WatchMojo.com play. Number 20, Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo. Hey there, cutie pants. <laughs> Am I as studly as the statue of David or what? There's nothing wrong with a confident guy seeking companionship, but this blonde beefcake didn't quite keep up with the times. As a result, Johnny's attempts at charm come off as self-centered, dim-witted, and incredibly misogynistic. Oh yeah, she wants me. Still, being a grade-A jerk isn't enough for a jail sentence. Where Johnny finds himself in hot water is when he starts harassing people and not taking no for an answer. It's even worse when he broadens his search pool. It feels like he's tried to hit on every single girl in Aaron City, age-inappropriate and non-human candidates included. That's right, when we say no one is safe from Johnny's harassment, we really mean no one. I knew that blonde-haired poser was perpetrating a fraud. Number 19, Gumball Watterson, The Amazing World of Gumball. Well, Lindsay Larry, please come to the checkout. Lindsay Larry, no one calls me that anymore. I stopped being Lazy Larry years ago. There's a very fine line between playfulness and plain cruelty. Gumball Watterson doesn't just cross that line, he frequently pretends that it doesn't even exist. Just ask Larry, or Darwin, or really anyone or anything else Gumball hangs around. The show often plays it off with jokes, but there's nothing remotely funny about Gumball's narcissistic behavior, especially because, most of the time, it puts everyone close to him in serious danger. He's a textbook example of disturbing the peace, but despite that, he's not one to really apologize for all the mischief he causes. Clearly, Gumball needs a few nights in Juvenile Hall, or at least a very long grounding. I will break you! What? Someone over there needs their help for like two minutes. Number 18, Eustace Bag, Courage the Cowardly Dog. The scariest part of the show isn't the monsters or aliens, it's Eustace. This dog owner's husband has intentionally put courage in harm's way more times than we can count. That's not even including all the episodes where Eustace laid hands on the protagonist. Stupid dog! You made me look bad! <laughs> There's simply no excuse for his actions, so Eustace doesn't even try to give one. Instead, he remains a stubborn, unlikable villain to the very end. Suffice it to say, he's doled out enough cruelty and neglect to put him in the slammer for a very, very long time. Go ahead, you stupid burglar helping dog. Get on with it. While that doesn't end up happening, Eustace still gets a heaping dose of satisfying karma every now and then. Number 17, Vic Reynolds, F is for Family. As it turns out, the friendly next door neighbor spends most of his time intoxicated on various substances, before you ask, yes, these substances include some of the highly illegal variety. She get a tiger, too. I know a guy gets the best tigers you ever seen. Either way, it's not uncommon for Vic to wake up from a week-long bender not knowing what day it is anymore. To make matters worse, he's been known to drive while under the influence, too. Clearly, he's a danger to himself and everyone around him. Keep in mind, he's also a father. For the sake of everyone's safety, Vic needs to be put into custody, and hopefully given some long-term help for his substance use disorder. Wow, that was some party I had last night. Your party was a week and a half ago. Number 16, Dr. Thaddeus Rusty Venture, The Venture Brothers. In the name of science, there's pretty much no end to the amount of global damage Rusty Venture has caused. But that might have been someone's spirit, Pop. All the more reason to get it the hell off me. It's to the point that we wouldn't be surprised if any number of government agencies busted down his door to put him in cuffs. I have some bitty 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 big government contracts I gotta get cracking on. I'm bitty 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 back in action, and there are bitty bitty bills to pay. It could be because of his dangerous inventions. Or maybe it's that his kids are actually illegal clones. Or perhaps it's just that he's an immature man-child in desperate need of a timeout. In hindsight, it's not too shocking that Rusty turned out this way. Based on the actions of his dad, it's clear this kind of behavior runs in the family. Nonsense, Hector. He's probably just dehydrated. Well, maybe, but that thing looks kind of super evil, man. Number 15, Hank Hill, King of the Hill. The Hill family patriarch only cares about four things. Hank, Hank, 
Propane, and Hank again. Anyone who gets in the way of that gets to see his ugly side. Now look here, you are gonna smoke this entire carton. Rather than taking the high road, Hank always solves problems with name calling, violence, or both. It's not like this is a rare occurrence either. The amount of times Hank has committed battery over the years is downright staggering. The number of offenses grows even bigger if you include all the other criminal offenses he's guilty of. At this point, the only question remaining isn't whether Hank is innocent or not, it's why he hasn't been convicted yet. Are you suggesting I break the law? Number 14, Chris McLean, Total Drama. It's hard to tell if this guy was hired to host a TV show or torment a bunch of unsuspecting victims. Either way, the end result is eerily similar. Using your own bikes, you'll race the course avoiding hidden pitfalls. Cue the death traps! Chris McLean is probably the only game show host to fill his challenges with life-threatening obstacles. Sharks, explosions, humiliation, you name it. Chris has probably tried it. What's more, he has the gall to laugh at the contestant's pain too. Chris did have a run-in with the law at the end of season 4, but despite that and a short stint behind bars, he ultimately returned the following year with new and fresh ways to endanger his competitors and the planet. This show must have an airtight legal team. Is that a yes or a no? No idea. But does anyone really care? It's Scott! Number 13, Bender Bending Rodriguez, Futurama. For the first time in my life, I feel like I've stolen enough. Bender, snap out of it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what came over me. You think that above all else, a robot would have some self-restraint, but that's not the case with Bender. He's the type of bot to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. Consequences be damned. Full disclosure, Bender's hijinks are usually full of gut-busting hilarity. However, when you stop to think about it, you realize just how little he cares about the well-being of others. The cruelty of the old pharaoh is a thing of the past! Hey! Let a whole new wave of cruelty wash over this lazy land! In a different show, any character who committed this much crime will be labeled an irredeemable villain. So even though he's good for a few jokes, the fact of the matter is that the galaxy would be a lot safer if Bender was powered off for good. Number 12, Uncle Ruckus, The Boondocks. If you could put someone in jail for a bad attitude, Uncle Ruckus would be there a hundred times over. He has a knack for bringing down the mood just about everywhere he goes, but considering he's a raging, bigoted racist, that might be on purpose. My stars and gods, President Ronald Reagan, my hero. Despite the fact that he's black, he still feels the need to spew all sorts of horrific hate speech and target non-white people on the basis of race. As a matter of fact, it might be genuinely difficult to find a single scene where Uncle Ruckus doesn't say something offensive. Given that he appears in many of the show's episodes, that's a big feat. I must say that's a brilliant observation, Mina. Number 11, Beavis and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead. If you're going to read these two of their rights, it's probably faster to list all the laws they haven't broken, mainly because there aren't that many left. That's right, even though they're just teens, Beavis and Butthead have gotten away with some unspeakable crimes. Crashed a plane? Check. Burnt a building down? Also check. Caused a mass outbreak of food poisoning? Again, check. We could go on, but you get the point. At the rate they're going, who knows what Beavis and Butthead will be like as adults. <laughs> We're pretty funny, huh, Beavis? Unless someone holds them accountable for everything they've done, these two are destined to be staples on the most wanted list. We got our jobs back. Yeah, but like, <laughs> now we have to follow all these stupid rules. Number 10, Roger, American Dad. Ow, ow, oh, my running regimen is killing my lower back. Ah, oh, I gotta lie down. <laughs> You guys can get up now, it's definitely over! He may be under the protection of Stan Smith, but that doesn't stop Roger from scheming up a storm with various false alter egos. Once outside the Smith household, Roger finds himself waist deep in what would surely be identity theft and fraud charges in the real world. Word on the street is you're horning in on my business. Yeah, well, word on the street is your product sucks. Yeah, well, word on the street is I don't have a comeback for that, but what I do have are these brawny sidemen. The irony is not lost on the writers of American Dad either, considering that most of Roger's deceptive identities are either in jail or wanted for a wide range of crimes such as abuse and possibly even serial murder. With even an entire floor of the CIA dedicated to finding and capturing him, it is safe to say that Roger indeed deserves to go down for his dastardly deeds. You're really gonna kill five people over $20? Are you really asking that to the guy who just last week killed six people over $19? Number nine, Little Gideon Gleeful, Gravity Falls. The entire Ponds family! 
family have invoked my fury. You will all pay recompense for your transgressions. At first, taking on the appearance of a traveling child psychic, the pig-nosed and conniving little Gideon soon proves himself to be quite the villainous mastermind. The only way Gideon's taken over this shack is by breaking in and stealing my deed. You mean like right now? Uh, 38, 41. Oh, heavens to Betsy. On top of commercial sabotage on Grunkle Stan's mystery shack, Gideon's criminal record proves to be quite extensive, with attempted murder charges as well as overt fraud. However, the biggest crime in Gideon's file would have to be when he summoned the mind demon Bill Cipher into Gravity Falls, allowing for Cipher's eventual near destruction of the universe. I'll help you with this, and in return, you can help me with something I've been working on. We'll work out the details later. Deal. We're not even sure how to classify that one. Number 8. Vicky, the Fairly Odd Parents. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Turner. It's me, Vicky. <laughs> there are some babysitters you just shouldn't leave your kids at home with. Someone should have told the Turner family that before they hired Vicky, the sadistic teen. Although she would be tried as a minor, Vicky's track record is less than clean, exposing poor Timmy to various weapons and acts of cruelty that should have had Mr. and Mrs. Turner scrambling for a nanny cam. <laughs> Yet Vicky's incredible ability to act pleasant around adults makes her an unsuspected predator. I'll take care of the little darling like he was my own cash and blood. Have fun at the movies. Bye. All right, twerp. Time for bed. But she's pretty much the reason for Timmy's need for his fairy godparents. Vicky's psychological mistreatment could very well lead to a dangerous future for Timmy. Number seven, Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob SquarePants. He may have the citizens of Bikini Bottom scrambling to his restaurant for Krabby Patties, but Eugene H. Krabs' mistreatment of his own employees would get him in serious hot water with any respectable labor board. With inhumane working conditions, Mr. Krabs' stingy business model is downright illegal. I'm going on my lunch break, Mr. Krabs. You got five minutes! Wow! One more minute than yesterday! In a more major turn of events, the shrewd restauranteur has also poisoned his loyal customers with tainted food and caused the near extinction of Bikini Bottom's jellyfish population, all in the name of turning a profit. What kind of monster is responsible for this horror? That's it, boys! Keep that gelatinous gold a flowing! He also famously plotted the murder of health inspector Yellowtail using SpongeBob as an accomplice. Listen! He ate it! Oh, look at him choke! Ah! Ah! Oh, look at him suffer! Ah! Number six, Homer Simpson, The Simpsons. You did not pay for that beer! <laughs> Let's just say that if there were an award for world's greatest dad, Homer Simpson would not even be in the running for a shot at the title. With instances of horrific treatment, especially in his routine strangling of Bart in public and in private, driving under the influence, and negligence at a dangerous nuclear power station, Homer Simpson probably should be thrown in jail every so often for intense rehabilitation. I'm in no condition to drive, boy. Wait! I shouldn't listen to myself! I'm drunk! <laughs> Not the only Springfieldian to dabble in petty crime, another potential candidate could be the evil tycoon C. Montgomery Burns, who has done everything from racketeering to enslaving a missing Brazilian soccer team for free labor. We found a missing Brazilian soccer team working in your reactor core. That plane crashed on my property. Number five, Sterling Archer. Archer. Lana, you and I, more me, were two of the best secret agents in the world. We were rogues. Potato patrizen, whatever. He may be the world's deadliest spy, but the seriously amoral and selfish Sterling Archer should definitely be under the eye of the law. One of them doesn't have any skin on his face. Meaning what? Meaning I set one of them on fire? Pretty much a visual stand-in for shady intelligence operatives of the 20th century, Archer's lavish lifestyle is that of someone who truly believes he is above the rules. Seeing that he has orchestrated various shady operations with his covert agency, ranging from trafficking illicit substances to orchestrating a coup in Central America, Archer's body count alone should require some heavy investigation. We're wondering what other crazy shenanigans Archer will get mixed up into in future seasons. And since the government has unjustly accused us of treason, we are now forced to transfer those skills from espionage to criminal activity. Kind of like the A-Team, but we sell drugs. Number four, Eric Cartman, South Park. Eric Cartman has committed more crimes before age 13 than most career criminals accomplish in a lifetime. 
Cartman's biggest offenses can be chalked up to disturbing the peace in forms of prejudiced and hateful rallies, as well as the kidnapping and attempted murder of non-gingers. Cartman? Oh, Jesus, I should have known. When we begin here, we will take worldwide until the blood of every non-ginger child has been spilled. But Carmen's most disturbing offense is definitely the murder by proxy of local jerk Scott Tennerman's parents. While he didn't pull the trigger himself, he did go the extra mile with the chili, which contained questionable ingredients, if you catch our drift, that was eventually fed to an unsuspecting Tennerman. I made you eat your parents. Jesus Christ, dude! He also purposely infected Kyle out of spite. Bone chilling indeed. You think HIV is something to be laughed at, Kyle? Well, let's just see how funny it is now, asshole. Number three, Peter Griffin, Family Guy. You're drunk, okay? You're drunk. Give me your keys. And, and I'm drunk, so I'll give you my keys. Okay, now we're both good to drive home. He may just be a normal man living his life in Quahog, but Peter Griffin has racked up a laundry list of crimes both petty and major. His outright emotional mistreatment of his daughter Meg, as well as his constant public intoxication, and sometimes substance use, could have him sent away to the big house for a few years at least. Tell you what, I'll get us started. Ah, <sighs> that feels... that feels better. On a much larger scale, Peter has also committed sexual harassment, robbing a bank, and blowing up a hospital. Well, watch this. Oh, God. Oh, my God, this is horrible. Oh, God. Oh, that's terrible. Much like his evil infant son, Stewie, who also has a mile-long criminal track record, Peter should definitely be considered public enemy number one. This is a robbery! Everybody get on the ground! If this bitch moves, shoot him in the eye! Number two, Rick Sanchez, Rick and Morty. Whatever the crime, this guy has probably done it. Mad scientist Rick Sanchez has the dubious honor of committing heinous crimes in not just one, but an infinite number of existential planes, leading to the destruction of entire universes and species. Even responsible for killing versions of himself, Rick's carefree attitude makes him a remorseless criminal. Although he technically was put away for his various offenses, this turned out to be a ploy to steal his portal gun formula, meaning that the tragic anti-hero of Rick and Morty has never truly answered for his very disturbing crimes. Hey, what are you in for? Everything. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Glenn Quagmire, Family Guy. I got a package for you, too. All right. Nice try, but I built up an immunity. It doesn't really need to be said, but there's something overtly wrong about being a proud predator. No stranger to terrifying acts of depravity, Glenn Quagmire fits the bill for being one of the worst offenders to get away with his crimes. Committing almost every disgusting crime under the sun, he wouldn't stand a chance staying clear of the courts in the real world. I don't want to go to jail, but I really want to take credit. On top of all that, Family Guy creators turned Quagmire into a horrific sadist in a tasteless parody that had the deviant murder of the entire Simpson family. Oh no! Who will pay for my saxophone lessons? Let's just say, it is high time for Quagmire to giggity giggity go down. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.